Hi, I'm Manga Captor and welcome to May's reading log. I read a lot of stuff in May and I actually didn't enjoy a lot of it. I DNF'd a ton of things and we're not gonna get into that. If you're an avid reader, eventually you're gonna come across something that you just don't personally enjoy for whatever reason. But despite that, I did read some things that I genuinely enjoyed, so I'm going to be focusing on those highlights. Starting with March Comes In Like a Lion, Volume 2. I had been waiting for this volume to come out for a long time. It was supposed to come out late last year, but didn't come out until like recently, like last month or something. I don't even remember anymore. It's all a blur. This was one of my most like highly anticipated releases and it did not disappoint. I'm really enjoying the format of this story. The story doesn't just tell you everything all at once. It gives you things in bits and pieces through like flashbacks and foreshadowing and like things like that. I find that this format of storytelling is very intriguing and engaging. It makes me want to keep finding out more nuggets of information about our main character's past. This series really does a good job at portraying depression without glamorizing it or making it seem like this edgy, cool, romantic thing to be going through. It's really not. It's terrible to go through that in your life and I am just really rooting for our main character. And it also makes Shogi seem like a really interesting thing to get into. I'm curious myself and am honestly tempted to learn Shogi. It seems a little bit intimidating because I've never played it before, but in this manga volume specifically, they kind of like talk a little bit more in depth about Shogi in a way that feels very like digestible and easy. So that's also a fun part about this series. I haven't watched the anime or anything like that, so this is my first time experiencing this story and I I'm really enjoying it. Another highlight I had in the month of May was the Song of Achilles. All right, it's the same day a little later. The sound just wasn't good in this portion of the video, so I'm redoing it. I really, really enjoyed the Song of Achilles. This is very much about Achilles, but it's told from the perspective of Patroclus. He becomes Achilles' friend and man in arms and eventually his lover. The way that he just views Achilles is so beautiful. I love that the anchor of this story is their love for each other and it is so queer and that is just something that I truly love about it. Even thinking about it now, I nearly want to cry because it's a tragic love story. Despite its tragedy and its sadness, it's one that is worth experiencing. It's one that is worth rereading. I annotated this book. This was the first book that I annotated ever, so it will also always have a special place in my heart for that reason. So yeah, I really enjoyed this, and I'm curious to read more by this author, so I went ahead and ordered Circe, and I'm excited to check that one out as well. I think I'm just gonna go on a huge Greek mythology retelling kick because I'm obsessed, and now it's part of my personality. Okay, and now moving on to another read that was also pretty dark, volume three of the summer Hikaru died. This series is just so good. I talked about it briefly in my manga haul video because I just recently got it and I read it right away. It's just a very powerful series that really talks about grief in an interesting way through the genre of horror, which is just so interesting because like horror already is very like anxiety inducing and stressful sometimes when you're reading good horror that is. So it's like the perfect environment to talk about grief because grief also brings about these feelings of anxiety and stress and just feeling like uncomfortable, unsettled, like something is just off. And I also just really enjoy the artwork in this series. It is truly cinematic and beautiful to look at. It's haunting. It feels like you're watching a movie and that is such a great sign of a good manga. It feels like every single panel is like meaningful. Sometimes I read manga where some panels just feel kind of like empty or they feel like they don't really do much for the story. But in The Summer Hikaru Died, like every panel is just put to work, honey, and I just love it. So if you're looking for a horror manga with some BL tones to it, I think this is a great pick. Just be aware of the trigger warnings. I will put them on screen. Horror mangas always have like a million trigger warnings because they really just like take a deep dive into the human psyche and talk about fears that we commonly have as humans and just make us feel those fears all over again, really. But yeah, it's a masterpiece. It's really good so far and I'm 
just excited to continue reading the future volumes as they come out. It's definitely one of those series that I just will read the next volume as soon as it's available. Now moving on to a series that's more lighthearted because we just talked about two tremendously sad reads, so let's even this out a little. The next highlight that I read was Associate Professor Akira Takatsuki's Conjecture Volume 3. That title is crazy. This is a supernatural slice of life series that I'm just really enjoying. I can't say much about the story at this point since it is Volume 3, so things are brewing and it's just something that, you know, would be best experienced yourself. This manga has such a great friendship between the two main characters, Fukamichi, who is able to hear lies and his professor Takatsuki. Like, the bond that they have is just so sweet and cute. They genuinely care for each other. And I just love manga that portrays friendship. I just feel like so many things like bleed into romance. Like, you know, if you see like two characters that seem to be pretty close and pretty connected, people just are like, oh, they're together. No, they're not. And I like it that way because friendships are just a special type of relationship where you can really experience trust and connection and I just love, 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 love the friendship between these two characters and I need more. I need more and as soon as volume 4 comes out I am reading it immediately. So. Yeah. And now let's move on to a happy fluffy category which is BL. One of the best things that I read this month, if not maybe the best thing I read this month, um, which surprised me, was Our Dining Table. This is a manga one-shot and it was so good. I adore this BL. I think it's one of my favorites. I would have adored this as a series. I think it definitely has the potential to be a series, but I also just really enjoy the morsel that it is. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's so cute and precious. And I can see myself rereading this multiple, multiple times. In my opinion, the romance in this one shot is perfect. It's perfect. It's just so sweet. Despite how brief this is, it really like portrays love very well. This story is about a salary man named Yutaka who has some trouble eating food around people and this causes him to eat by himself and he's a pretty isolated person because of this. But one day as he's eating his homemade lunch all by himself, a young boy named Tane comes up to him and asks him, to eat some of his food and he can't say no because Tane is this cute sweet little boy who is hungry and he gives him some of his onigiri and Tane is just amazed. And Tane has an older brother named Minoru who is the love interest and he tells his big brother all about this onigiri, he doesn't shut up about it and Minoru is like okay we need to get this recipe and so what happens is that both brothers come up to Yutaka and tell him Hey, can you possibly give us your recipe and teach us how to make your delicious food? And from there on, they start sharing meals together, they all get closer to each other, and it's just such a sweet story. And I love this BL so much because it doesn't just focus on romantic love, it also goes into the importance of familial love and found family, and how those types of bonds can really give us a sense of security that is so important to our lives. I just love how holistically this one shot approaches the topic of love in all of its forms. I just love this so much and I will never shut up about it, except for now because I need to talk about the next thing that I read. And another BL series that I read was Cherry Magic. If you watched my waking up at 5am vlog, I read volumes 1 through 10 of Cherry Magic, which are currently what's available in English. Um, early in June or mid-June, we're gonna get volume 11, which is really exciting, and I'm happy that I you know, just really went at it and am now caught up. So Cherry Magic is about this guy named Adachi who reaches the age of 30 having not slept with anyone. And that gives him this wizard-like ability to read minds. So having this ability to read people's minds has caused him to isolate a little bit because people can be pretty two-faced and he directly experiences that. He's able to read people's thoughts by simply touching them, which has led him into these pretty awkward situations and one day he brushes against one of his handsome colleagues Kurosawa and 
he hears his thoughts and his thoughts are just very romantic and affectionate about him which really catches him off guard. I think that giving the main protagonist this power is such a smart idea because a lot of romance is kind of like oh, do they love me? Do they not? I don't really know how they actually feel. I just love that Adachi, because of his power, never has these doubts of whether or not Kurosawa actually likes him. He clearly knows his real feelings. And it's so sweet because then we just see how sincere Kurosawa actually is. He is not hiding anything. He doesn't have any ulterior motives. He truly just likes our protagonist, Adachi. So if you're looking for a BL where the characters get together very quickly and it's just about their sweet romantic endeavors, Cherry Magic is a great pick for that. And moving on to another happy little BL, we have the other world's books depend on the bean counter. This is a fun story that I started reading through the light novels. It's basically just about this salary man that gets isekai'd into another world and he is addicted to just working. He doesn't really have a life outside of work and now that he's in this new environment, this new world, we think he would decide to do something different but he goes right back into just working and working himself to the bone. But of course he realizes that he's allergic to the magic in this new world and Aresh, this powerful night basically rescues him by sleeping with him. I feel like I've talked about this premise multiple times, so you probably know it by now. One thing about me when it comes to romance manga in general, I really adore when one of the love interests is overprotective and a little cold. I don't know what that says about me and I don't want to critically analyze myself right now, but Aresh is the perfect textbook example of what I'm talking about. He is kind of cold, but he's also still very caring, just like Shiro from What Did You Eat Yesterday, another character that I just absolutely love. Aresh is very like, sit, eat, sleep, and if you don't, then we're gonna have problems. You know what I mean? Like, I love that kind of vibe where it's just like, you clearly have like a hard time sharing your affection, but you're trying and it comes across really stern and cold, but it's truly not. I just think it's really funny and it's a character type that I just really enjoy. So whenever I find a character like that in a series, I just get hooked. I don't have much else to say about this. I'm just really enjoying it and I'm excited to keep reading this manga and the light novels. And now moving on to another BL, of course. I read volumes 19 and 20 of What Did You Eat Yesterday? So now I'm finally caught up, but there is a new volume that's coming out at the end of May. It would have already come out by the time this is posted, so I've probably already read it by the time you're watching this. I love this series so much. I feel like Fumi Yoshinaga is doing such a great job with this. The characters are just incredible. Like you really, really root for them and you love them. I just adore series like that, that make me truly care about the characters. If you're on the fence about starting this or you've already started it but don't know if you want to continue, I would highly encourage you to keep reading. I think like the first volume is a little bit rough to get through now that I'm remembering it. It has some jokes that maybe are a little poor taste, but don't worry. There is character development, people grow, people learn. <laughs> All I'm saying is that like characters are flawed and I feel like I used to be the kind of person that as soon as I read something that had a flawed character, I'm like, mm -mm, problematic, I'm putting it down. But I realized that people are like that in real life and that people can grow and realize their wrongdoings and change. So I feel like this series really taught me not to just put down a manga series because a character, you know, gets on my nerves or a character does something that I don't like. I realize that it's kind of a silly reason to stop reading something. But yeah, anyways, I'm rambling and I think I've already said what I wanted to say about this, so let's move on. And the last thing in my highlights for May is My Love Mix-Up. I read the last two volumes of this series and I loved it so much. This series just does such a great job at conveying romance, especially like your first love. I feel like My Love Mix-Up is such a great example of love that is like patient and understanding. And I also really appreciate that the mangaka really respected these characters. And what I mean is that 
The physical relationship between these two boys is handled really well. It's more so just like implied. So don't come into this BL thinking that it's going to be something that's very smutty. It's not, they're in high school. And it's really just a story about falling in love, being patient, not rushing into things, like letting people experience their emotions, letting people ask questions that are a little bit hard to answer right now. Like what even is love? Like how do you even know you're in love? When I finish a manga series, and I'm sad afterwards, that's how I know it was good. So it was good. And that's all I have to say about it. So that concludes my highlights for the month of May. Thank you so much for watching. In the comments, go ahead and let me know if any of these reads were also a favorite of yours. Or also feel free to recommend me any series based off of what I've been reading. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you want to watch more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really helps my channel. And until we meet again, organize your email inbox. Enjoy a little dessert, read some isekai, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.